When using a pipette, the first thing required is an empty flask that the material will be transferred into. You can see that it is empty. A flask of distilled water can also be made available if you need to rinse the pipette out. And finally, in this case, the blue water solution that will be transferred using the pipette. It can be seen here being moved from the source container into an intermediate flask to avoid contamination during the transfer process. To use a pipette, pick up the pipette and hold it in your dominant hand. In your other hand, hold the pipette bulb. Place the tip of the pipette in the solution. Make sure it is deep enough in the solution so that it does not draw air into the pipette. Remember that the level of the solution will drop as the pipette draws the liquid into it. Squeeze the pipette bulb and place it on top of the pipette tube. With the finger on top of the bulb, Press the bulb firmly against the pipette and unsqueeze the bulb. This will create a vacuum in the pipette and draw the liquid into it. If more liquid is needed in the pipette, remove the squeeze bulb from the pipette and place your index finger over the end of the pipette where the bulb was. Then squeeze the bulb and repeat the drawing process until enough material is in the pipette. Once enough material is in the pipette, remove the squeeze bulb and place your index finger against the end of the pipette to prevent material from draining out. Note the quantity of material that is in the pipette. This is the initial volume. Lightly press the tip of the pipette against the side of the flask. Remove your index finger from the end of the pipette and allow the material to drain out of the pipette until the desired quantity has been transferred. Note the quantity of material that remains in the pipette. This is the final volume. Most liquids that are confined to a vessel will form a concave surface due to the interactions of the molecules with the glass. The molecules cling to the vessel where they contact it. This forms a curved surface with the lowest portion of the surface at the greatest distance from the vessel. This effect is more pronounced in narrow vessels. This is called the meniscus. This image shows the meniscus that is formed when the blue water solution has been drawn into the pipette. When taking a measurement, the meniscus has to be taken into account. The pipette should be held vertically, and you should bring your eyes down to the vessel rather than bringing the pipette to your eyes. The measured value should then be read from the lowest part of the meniscus. In this case, the measured value is approximately 0.90 milliliters. A burette card can be placed behind the pipette to help distinguish the exact location of the meniscus. This provides a better contrast than the ba available background light. While we watch Gabrielle and John use a pipette, let's discuss the priming and cleaning process for a pipette. Before using a pipette, it should be primed. This will clean the pipette and prepare it for use. Priming requires the use of deionized water and the solution being used. Begin with the water, filling one-third of the pipette. Move the pipette to a horizontal position with your fingers over both ends of the pipette. Roll the pipette to wet the inside. Hold the pipette vertically and drain it. Repeat this two more times with the water. Then repeat this process three more times using the solution. The pipette is now primed and ready for use. To clean the pipette, do the same thing, but begin with tap water for the first three rinses, then the last three rinses should use deionized water. If the bowl becomes contaminated, remove the taper and rinse thoroughly with deionized water.